that's it, just acoustically. So I have it plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the amplifier. This was quite a project. Um, it's a copy of a Dyer harp guitar, turn of the century. Um, instrument originally inspired by a gentleman named Chris Knudsen and um, produced by uh, himself and uh, the Larson brothers around the turn of the century. Um, it's basically a regular guitar. There's a big harp arm coming off, and uh, then these five sub basses that are floating off, kind of harp style. So, and it's the harp guitar. Uh, always wanted one of these uh, since I was a kid. Bought the plan way back in 2001 and uh, started building on it in 2009. Um, <clears throat> and had some technical problems, set it aside for a while, and after building all these instruments recently I looked at it and I figured you know I need to try to finish this so because it's just a gigantic instrument you know the sound box is humongous um, I, uh, I don't have uh, expensive woods in this um, I couldn't really afford to you know experiment with really high-end uh, you know sick spruce or you know walnut or rosewood or any of that so but I did have <coughs> some Spanish cedar laying around I had a big piece it was 10 inches wide and about 10 feet long and uh, it was pretty thin already, so I went ahead and used that for the top, joined it, book matched the best I could. I know Spanish cedar is not a traditional top wood in guitars. Um, it's soft and apparently it doesn't have a lot of strength, but I did really brace this heavily and um, <clears throat> I did something. I found uh, a luthier in Chicago named Jim Worland who, uh, who builds harp guitars and he built one and he used a frame. Um, he cut a frame out in the shape of the guitar. And uh, you know he wanted to put he puts uh, super trebles on this side and everything and so the frame really added a lot of strength and I thought you know what a great idea uh, as far as building I didn't build a form so I didn't uh, bend the sides in a traditional form I cut out a frame I couldn't afford the birch because you know half inch cabinet birch is pretty expensive but I used a piece of uh, oak plywood and uh, it's really solid you know I I put a the, ply, the oak down to minimize the footprint on the soundboard. <clears throat> but uh, one of the technical problems I had is since I didn't have a form or a bending iron or anything, I steamed these sides, which is, these are Cadman Great Birch sides, um, and one, I just bolted them to the frame, you know, thinking that would be enough. But as the wood dried, it kind of twisted the frame. So um, that's one of the reasons I kind of set it aside for a while. I just really didn't know how to finish it off because I had the top glued on and braced and I'm looking at this thing going, oh my, you know, the, the, the back is twisted. You know, how am I going to straighten that out so that the strings are going to work? So what I ended up doing is I went ahead and made another back. Um, and again, this is a cabinet grade birch, but it's extremely heavy. It's 3 16ths, like 200 thousandths of an inch. So it's just shy of a quarter of an inch on the back. And then I braced it totally non-harmonically. I used uh, tapered uh, quarter-inch oak um, and a Z pattern down here to make this back just rock solid. And so I ended up pulling the top down to the back and glued it down, and it straightened out the top. So the back, I'm sure, doesn't contribute harmonically in any way, except it's something to bounce the sound off of. So 
Probably why it sounds better plugged in, but for what it's made out of, I don't think it sounds too bad. I did make the the ebony bridge all by hand. I carved it. Uh, it's a massive bridge, and um, I modified that from the dire style. And again, I I went big because you know I'm not ex exactly sure what kind of string tension I have on this top. Um, it's X braced, modified from the plan, pretty heavy braces. I used carbon fiber bars instead of a bridge plate down here. I had originally thought about doing a trapeze tailpiece and realized, you know, that's just not gonna, that's not gonna look good and it's not gonna work. So I went ahead and used the traditional bridge on the top, but instead of uh, a pin through bridge, you know, I, it's a string through bridge, you know, drilled out. And the bridge, interestingly enough, is not glued down. It's bolted to the top with these furniture bolts uh, through smaller plates made of uh, really hard rock maple underneath. The plates are glued in and then the blocks are, or the screws are through the blocks with washers and spring, spring washers and, uh, and nuts. And it, and it seems to hold just fine. So I like the sound of the instrument better plugged in. That's another reason why I went ahead and um, put transducers in it because I figured, you know, it's a massive instrument and it may just sound horribly clunky um, acoustically, so at least I can amplify the top. So I put a, a piezo transducer behind the bridge, glued down, and then one on the treble side, one on the bass side, and ran all that back in parallel. So separate wires from each transducer going into the jack at the back. Um, the sub basses. Are tuned G, D, C, B, A. I only have five, um, and I think that's the Stephen Bennett tuning. Now I just have to learn how to play it. bit of luck too with the wood it started to I guess started to get a nice little curl up here as I worked the wood down and had you know this is all plywood this thing right here and it's part of the frame that I cut out but it was coming out so nice I'm like you know I'm just gonna overlay that with a piece of nice paddock uh, that I can oil out and get the grain to shine here's a little piece of rock maple as a spacer because I didn't have enough paddock to go all the way to the body of the guitar so the rock maple and there's a little bit of purple heart here too just to uh, kind of a decorative little thing. The neck, a buddy gave me, uh, California sent it to me. It's a laminated uh, Martin guitar neck. It was a second. And uh, for this, it's just fabulous. Uh, it had a squared off top, so I just buzzed it round. I think it looks a little bit better that way. And uh, the fingerboard I bought off eBay. It's rosewood. So the fingerboard and the neck were prefabricated. Everything else was built from scratch. Um, and I think that's about it. So harp guitar, dire style. Uh, after the modif it's after the GAL plan, um, modified somewhat, but uh, really kind of a cool thing. Love that C. to mention too is um, you know I always have trouble getting the neck fit upright I'm still learning those processes but one of the interesting things here is I used a, um, a piece of, um, of, of mild steel cold rolled steel and some and a piece of brass to kind of cover that up here decoratively but uh, I used that to bolt the guitar neck to the bass side neck and boy it's a rock-solid construct and I was actually even able to use it in the sense I've got a little piece of hard rock maple here and that I had to actually re-drill the holes to bring my strings down for a better action I don't have a truss rod in it but there is a carbon fiber bar so I was able to go ahead and put that little hard rock shim in just to give me a little pressure to pull the strings down just right so it gave me a little bit so the action worked out I mean I was able to adjust it without the truss rod and um, so I kind of got lucky there but uh, really like that technique here is, is using this little you know metal 
uh, coupling here to uh, give you out. This neck is just rock solid because of that, so it's nice. It solidifies all of your your work down here. I did have problems fitting up the neck because of this round piece, you know, this sweeping curve here, which is quite beautiful, but technically more challenging when you're setting the neck up on this curve, you know. If you look at some of the other designs that guys have, they'll complete this bout all the way over. So it's just like a regular guitar where they're setting this neck in and then there's this is more of an acute angle and the harp arm comes out so they can do what they normally do on the neck. So but it's all a learning process. <laughs> said and done. guitar. Thanks for watching.